Okay, for part two of this video, we're now going to look or summarize very quickly. We found that the domain in the last section was all real numbers, and we found out that it hits, uh, it has intercepts of 0, negative 3, 1, 0, negative 1 half 0, and negative 3, comma 0. So those are four points that we know on the graph. We just now need to know what is it doing in between those points. Now to find out where is it going up and where is it going down, we would need to look at the slope of the curve because if it's increasing the slope is positive and if it's decreasing the slope is negative. So to, in part C, to get the intervals of increase and decrease, we look at the derivative. The derivative of our function is 6x squared plus 10x minus 4 and you set the derivative equal to 0 to find these critical points, to find the slope points where the slope is 0. So if I'm setting that equal to 0, I'll common factor first, makes life easier, plus 5x, uh, let's take a 2 out though, so 2 gives 3x squared, 5x, and minus 2, that equals 0, divide by 2 both sides, and that 2 is gone, so now we're trying to look for two numbers that multiply to give negative 6, add to give positive 5. So if we're looking at a positive 6 and a negative 1 as two numbers. Again, our decomposition method says I'm just going to rewrite, decompose 5x as 6x and minus 1x. So my 3x squared stays put. Uh, we will now have 6x minus 1x. That's what 5x is. Just rewritten that. And minus 2, again, equals 0 common factor in the first two terms is a 3x, leaving x plus 2 behind. Common factor in the second two terms is a negative 1, leaving x plus 2 behind. So I have two factors now of 3x minus 1 and x plus 2 equaling 0. So I would have x equals 1 third and x equals negative 2 these are the critical points, the two points where the slope is equal to zero, where y prime is equal to zero. So these critical points are the points that I want to test. What do I mean by test is that if you consider a number line where you'd have negative two over here somewhere and one third over there, then you've broken up. You have intervals that you want to look at. You want to look, when everything's smaller than negative 2, what is the derivative doing? Is it positive or negative? And in between negative 2 and 1 third, is it positive or negative? That's our question mark. And bigger than 1 third, is it positive or negative? So I like to do this in a table to organize it, but you could just do it on the number line, just plug in numbers, but I'll do it in the way we usually will see it presented. First of all, we recognize this is x smaller than negative 2, any number in that range. We also would say that this range is between negative 2 and 1 third, and this range is x larger than 1 third. And I want to test my derivative, and my derivative was made up of 3x minus 1 and x plus 2. So my 3x minus 1 will be one line in this table x plus 2 will be another line in my table and the derivative is what we're testing my intervals are x less than negative 2 between negative 2 and 1 third and larger than 1 third and all I'm doing in this table is I'm going to be plugging in any number in each range into these and find out if they're positive or negative. Not work out the number, I just need to know if it's positive or negative. Any number less than negative 2, I'd say negative 3 is a great choice. Negative 3 plugged into here, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, another negative is negative 10, it's a negative number. Negative 3 plus 2 is also a negative number. In our derivative, we are multiplying 3x minus 1 and x plus 2, so y prime in this case is a negative, and another negative makes a positive. 
So the derivative is always positive when x is smaller than negative 2. Pick any number in the second range, like 0 is between negative 2 and 1 third. Plugging in 0, 3x minus 1 will be negative. Plugging in 0 into x plus 2 will be positive. When a negative and a positive are multiplied together, you always get a negative number. That means the derivative is always negative in the in-between negative 2 and 1 third. Plugging in a number larger than 1 third, we'll plug in the number 1. 3 times 1 minus 1 is a positive. 2 plus 1 is a positive. The function is increasing everywhere after 1 third. The positive means it's increasing. It's going up. The negative means it's decreasing, going down. And the positive means it is increasing again. Well, now we're ready to consider what is a maximum and a minimum. Because if we know that before it hits negative 2, the function's going up, and in after negative 2, it's going down, then there must be a maximum point at the point x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is a maximum. Now, the same thing would be true if you know up to one-third the function is going down, and after one-third it's increasing and going up, then you have a minimum at the point x equals one-third. That's how you determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum. If it changes from increasing to decreasing, you've got a max. And if it changes from decreasing to increasing, you have a minimum. So let's define what the points are. You have a maximum at negative 2 comma something and a minimum at 1 third again comma something. How do we find out what the something is? We have to plug it into the original function way up here. So we'll bring it way down. If I can get it to come all the way down there. And ready to plug that in. Let's try. So we take our function now and plug in a negative 2. So y is equal to 2 times negative 2 cubed plus 5 times negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 3. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8 times 2 is a negative 16. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8. And minus 3, this is 4, plus 8 is 12, minus 3 is 9. So negative 2 comma 9 is a maximum point on the graph. The fraction one will be a bit tougher, but we can do it. So we have y is 2 onto 1 third cubed plus 5 onto 1 third squared minus 4 onto 1 third minus 3. This is 2 over 27. This is 5 over 9. 4 over 3. 3 over 1. Rather than use your calculator, we'll get a common denominator. 2 27 plus 15 27 minus 36 27 minus 81. Uh, no. Yeah, 81 27. Now we need to work that out. Here you have 36, so that's 117. Then you're adding 15. And then you're adding 2. So I believe you get negative 100 over 27. But whatever it is, even if it's wrong, don't bother commenting on it. Just fix it. So we have a one-third comma negative 127. And we now have our minimum point. We also have our maximum point. And all the intercepts coupled together with the intervals of increase and decrease We'll get a graph, and in the third and last installment, we'll compare that graph to what the actual function is and take a look at that. Well,